We are here today with uh, Dr. Oleg Bodrov. He is a physicist, environmentalist, uh, the founder of NGO Green World, the recipient of numerous honors, such as the Nuclear Free Future Award. Uh, and if you can tell us a little bit more about yourself as well as your, your mission. Um, I am physicist after the Polytechnical University. I was a researcher in the institute, military institute. I tested the nuclear reactors for submarine, Soviet and Russian submarines. But after the accident, I understood that it is really dangerous because it was uh, uh, explosion and the building where was uh, this nuclear equipment destroyed, some people died. And uh, I decided to investigate the impact of the nuclear industry to the nature. I live in the close nuclear town uh, uh, near the St. Petersburg, Sosnovy Bor. And uh, it is the biggest nuclear complex. There are now nine nuclear reactors and uh, four under construction now. Um, uh, when I was a researcher in the uh, Radium Institute, it was a regional environmental laboratory. I was the head of the group in this lab. Uh, we investigated the impact of the nuclear complex to the Baltic Sea. And uh, after the Chernobyl accident, I uh, had a business trip to the Chernobyl area. I took a samples for the investigation in our lab. But the problem is uh, it was not possible to publish this information. It was state secret. And for me, it was a conflict inside of me and my personal problem because uh, I have a mission like ecologists, uh, but it was not possible to inform people about the risks. And at that time, after the Chernobyl accident, I decided to go away from the nuclear industry and I established the non-governmental organization Green World and started to act like uh, expert and uh, like a leader of the anti-nuclear movement. And uh, the last 10 years, I uh, had a leader of the project decommissioning. The mission of this project is to promote safety decommission process of the old Russian nuclear reactors on the basis of the best international practice. We visited United States, main Yankee nuclear power plant, uh, Vermont Yankee, Germany, Greifswald, North nuclear power plants, and Lithuania, uh, Ignalina nuclear power plant. We look to this problem like complex of the problem, social, environmental, economical, and political problems. And uh, the solution is uh, reasonable if we will involve all stakeholders to the de decision-making process. I mean, authorities, nuclear industry, and um, uh, public. And uh, unfortunately, after the 10 years activity on this field, uh, we, uh, our organization received status foreign agents. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, maybe you know, the, we have Russian law about foreign agents because according to Russian Ministry of J uh, Justice, we act against Russian national interests because we want to close nuclear power plants and we used for these activities cooperation with our colleagues from the United States from Norway, from Sweden, and from Germany and other countries. And this is the problem now. And uh, in this year, we mm, established a new organization, uh, Decommission. It is uh, low liability companies, uh, Decommission, and we continue our activities uh, for the promotion safety decommission process in Russia. And w would you suggest decommission? What, what's your opinion on the use of nuclear energy for electricity, do you think it, the entire world should stop using nuclear power? <coughs> I think uh, Japanese experience uh, very well show that we have uh, the similar consequences, environmental and social consequences, from the military and civil nuclear industry. And uh, Chernobyl, uh, and now we have much more uh, examples which is show that it is really huge risk. In the same time, it is not possible to separate uh, civil and military nuclear complex because, for example, uh, in Russia, we have 20 nuclear towns. Uh, this, it is uh, usually, I say, uh, Rosatom country. It is 10 nuclear uh, 
close nuclear towns where live the people who connected with military nuclear industry and 10 nuclear towns uh, which is connected with so-called civil nuclear industry. Totally, we have uh, 20 nuclear towns in Russia and uh, there are live 1.5 million people. It is 1% of the Russian population. And these people very depend from the nuclear technology because all social infrastructure in these nuclear towns, it is single industry towns, they have no any alternatives. They are main promoter of the uh, nuclear development in Russia and they promote the international cooperation but in the same time uh, in this town uh, the people have the salary in two or three times more than the people who live in the same area but outside of this nuclear town so they have motivation to uh, continue to um, promote this status like national elite uh, and uh, uh, for example, we have uh, a nuclear uh, town uh, Azorsk or former Krasnoyarsk, uh, sorry, uh, Chelyabinsk uh, 65. There are uh, nuclear facilities which is produce the first plutonium for the first Russian Soviet nuclear bomb. But now the same infrastructure uh, Rosatom, Russian State Corporation, uh, used for the reprocessing of the spent fuel rods after the um, nuclear submarines and uh, after the Russian nuclear power plants. And after the reprocessing, they extract uh, uranium for the fabrication of the fresh fuel for the nuclear reactors like uh, Chernobyl type reactor in my town. Sosnovy Bor, close to St. Petersburg. In the same time, uh, already uh, Finnish company Finavoima have a plan, a preliminary agreement to produce the fresh fuel uh, for the Hanhi Kiwi-1 nuclear power plant after the extraction plutonium, after the, uh, after the reprocessing. It means uh, military nuclear tech, uh, infrastructure use for the so-called civil nuclear industry. So all uh, consumers of the electricity after the generation of uh, the Finnish uh, nuclear power plant, Hanhe Kivi, all consumers of this electricity will invest money for the Russian military complex because it is one, uh, is the same technologies. In the same time, after the extraction of the uranium uh, in the same facilities, they extract plutonium, which is used for the military, uh, wep for the weapons. So I think uh, now it is uh, reasonable to start discussion in Russia and in the United States about the future of the nuclear technologies. We need uh, real competition between uh, all energy sources. I mean, not uh, renewable energy, fossil fuel and uh, nuclear uh, fuel. So now we have no such competition because, because in Russia and in U United States, the government support nuclear industry because it is not only uh, generation of the electricity, but nuclear weapons. Uh, so I think it is high risk now um, because we, uh, we have not very good political situation in uh, Russia and uh, not only in Russia. W would, and you, would you consider it important the nuclear industry in, in Russia for self-defense? And, and maybe you can talk a little bit about this current conflict between USA and Russia. Uh, Both. It seems like USA is being very aggressive and they have a nuclear um, first strike policy. Uh, so, you know, it's like both would ha disarmament and decommissioning of power plants would happen, have to happen at the same time. Yes. So uh, how, how is this? It's a very complicated situation because doesn't Russia need the nuclear weapons as a deterrent to defend itself from the United States? Oh, I think uh, we need trust and uh, maybe it is key word trust. Now we have more and more confrontation uh, between Russia and other countries. 
I think it is increasing of the risk of the spontaneously conflicts which have chance to develop to the nuclear war. And uh, I think we need uh, um, cooperation not in discussion, not only on the governmental level, but on the level of the public. Uh, we need uh, uh, to contact with uh, Russian and American uh, NGOs uh, face to face to discuss about common plans, what reasonable to do because uh, we need a new strategy. Now we have uh, more and more confrontation, and uh, unfortunately, I have, I, I have no vision. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that government uh, can't find solution of this problem. We need to involve more stakeholders in this process. And if you could give us maybe a little more insight and, and your perspective of how you view this current situation, some people call it the new Cold War, uh, the second Cold War. How do you see, w can you explain what do you think is happening right now and what do you think ca can happen? Do you think it is going to escalate or are you optimistic that it's going to be resolved? I think it is escalate now and uh, I feel that um, the government, Russian government, uh, provide the policy which is uh, uh, install the barrier between uh, the communications of the Russian NGOs with American NGOs. The foreign agents law, it is one of the example. At the same time, I think we need uh, special uh, uh, events uh, and to involve to these events like international conference uh, with uh, participation of the government and non-governmental organizations about the current situation and discussion what can we do. And uh, we have very special situation in the Baltic Sea region now. Uh, we have more than 35 reactors in different countries and it is all nuclear reactors. And uh, the, on the western part of the nuclear uh, Baltic Sea, the Germany and uh, Sweden started to close nuclear power plants. But uh, Russia started to promote uh, new nuclear power plants in Finland, in Belarus, and uh, in uh, um, other countries. And uh, it, it looked like strange when uh, western part of the Baltic Sea, it is very environmentally sensitive area. They started to close because it is dangerous, but eastern part of the Baltic Sea construct a new nuclear power plant and uh, for the export electricity to the countries which have started to close nuclear power plants. So we need, and we already started to do it, to uh, meet uh, with the people from uh, Germany, from Lithuania and other countries and uh, we need common safety standards. The key uh, idea, uh, we need to discuss safety standards for our countries in uh, Baltic Sea region and between U United States and Russia. And now, unfortunately, we have uh, escalation of the problem. And could you, you've mentioned in some of your previous speeches, could you talk a little bit about, uh, you know, we had the, we had the J uh, Japan Fukushima incident Previously, Chernobyl, um, Kazakhstan uh, is, was where they've tested 600 uh, Soviet uh, bombs. Um, and you've mentioned how some of this pollution uh, radiation is yes. going into the seas. Uh, wh what are, and it seems to be underreported that it's worse than what is reported. Can you tell us about the environmental and human uh, dangers with, the, with these accidents? Um, we have uh, not only uh, Semipalatinsk area, now we have a current situation with uh, Techa River, it is Chelyabinsk region where uh, started a reprocessing process. Uh, uh, during the reprocessing of the 100 tons of the spent fuel rods, the nuclear facilities, uh, Mayak, discharge uh, 600 thousands cubic meters of the liquid radioactive waste to the water. We have now it. So the people who live on the, uh, this river, it is thousands of people, these really victims of this. 
so-called civil nuclear industry. And uh, the problem is there are no adequate information for the people and there are no adequate um, support uh, of the people who live there. Reasonable to uh, establish special program how to provide the safety, the people in this area. We need the same safety standards for the people in Chelyabinsk, in Ural region and in St. Petersburg. Now it's look like colonial policy because uh, now span few roads from the European part of the Russia transport to Siberia or to Ural region. And uh, there are, after the reprotesting, they discharge of the um, liquid radioactive waste to the river. It look like uh, European part of the Russia have um, colonial policy in Ural region and in Siberia. I think we need common standards. We have one country. At the same time, uh, we, uh, it's not only a problem of the one country, but we need common standards for the United States and for the Russia. And the reason to start discussion, what does it mean, common standards? And uh, I think this is the way. Uh, maybe it is the best strategy now. Did you have a question? Um, not yet, but I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm keep, keep uh, All right. Um, have you had any difficulties? I believe I, I read that, well, your NGO was shut down and you were assaulted or a few years ago? Uh, Have you had any other difficulties yes, or yes, your colleagues? Yes. Uh, in, to, in 2002, uh, 2003, I was attacked in the street after the criticism of the uh, one of the company from Sosnovy Bor. We stopped uh, the illegal melting of the metallic radioactive waste in Sosnovy Bor because they started to melt this radioactive waste without any permission, without environmental impact assessment. But when we published uh, this information, uh, this company stopped uh, by uh, authorities and uh, some people from this company attacked me in the street and about one month I was in the hospital. And uh, it is one uh, example. Another one, uh, two years ago, when we uh, participated in the discussion uh, about the repository of the radioactive waste in my town, uh, it was published uh, in a special newspaper, like public mm, news. Uh, uh, there are, uh, it was published article, uh, the Green World, the name of our organization, uh, is NGO with Norwegian orientation. Because uh, according to this article, we act, we received money from Norway, and we provide criticism of the Russian nuclear industry. It means we promote the gas and oil industry from Norway. Because uh, according to the author of this article, uh, the Russian nuclear energy, how to say, it is competition between uh, on in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, after that, uh, this company, um, a uh, commit S uh, request the prosecutor office to check our organization like foreign agent, uh, and uh, it means that uh, not only authorities but uh, d dirty um, companies use the foreign agent law like pressure to the people to uh, non-government organizations. So we have. Uh, situation, very bad situation with uh, NGOs, because if you have any cooperation with non-governmental organizations outside of the Russia, it means you act against um, uh, Russian national interests. It is interpretation of the uh, Russian Ministry of Justice. And of course, um, we will continue in any case to act like we did it, because I live only five kilometers from the nine nuclear reactors, and I know, like a physicist, like ecologist, 
why did it is really dangerous. I visited Chernobyl and uh, I was uh, I visited Fukushima area in Japan. So uh, my mission is to inform people not only in Russia but in the United States and in other countries. Uh, the mission of our organization and personal myself mm, uh, I'd like to open information window to the Russian nuclear industry because now it's more and more close uh, much more close that, uh, than it was a uh, few years ago uh, and you're, are you going to have the same problems with your new NGO you think they will shut, try to shut you down <coughs> We established uh, low liability companies. It is like private companies. And uh, it's not possible to give a name uh, for an agent because it is only NGO uh, can get such status. In the same time, uh, we establish NGO public council of the south coast of the Gulf of Finland. So our mission is to uh, be like watchdog on the south coast of the, of the Gulf of, on the Gulf of Finland, and um, uh, we not registered this NGO, so we not received money because we have no bank account. But of course, it is a problem now. But it's only one uh, solution, one model we, which we can use now for the continue our activities. Uh, I just read today that at the United Nations they are introducing a draft treaty to ban nuclear arms. Uh, have you heard about that and do you have any thoughts? Uh, I totally agree that we need to stop the, uh, any, to ban all nuclear weapons. And uh, many times uh, I participated in the, in the international conference in Japan and uh, I signed this agreement and this statement for this conference. We need to stop any nuclear uh, weapons. Uh, and any final, any thoughts or comments uh, regarding the nuclear industry, nuclear war, World War III, um, things people, common people can do? A any final thoughts or, or comments? First of all, I think uh, we need to cooperate between uh, Russian and uh, American non-government organizations. For example, just now uh, I met uh, only one hour ago with my colleague from the Connecticut, uh, Connecticut University, Nathaniel Trumbo. We uh, continue uh, to work with the uh, distance education course about the decommissioning. And it is huge. It is a huge problem for the United States and for the Russia to start uh, decommissioning uh, of the old nuclear industry. And um, we uh, have some uh, successful. We already publish this distance education course, and now we. Uh, next month we will uh, meet the colleagues from. Uh, Polytechnical University uh, for the discussion, what can we do together? So uh, it's reasonable if scientists and non-governmental organizations uh, will be uh, like um, on the top of these activities in nearest future. Because uh, I'm sure that this political confrontation between the United States and Russia uh, will stop. We have no uh, alternative uh, and we need uh, uh, we need a positive process not confrontation but cooperation for the our nuclear free future how can we create a, I, it seems to me that there's no real viable future for nuclear energy at this point uh, of course it's not possible to stop immediately and uh, uh, the our strategy and we promote such vision, we need uh, to uh, discuss, uh, we need um, to discuss together with three stakeholders, I mean uh, authorities, nuclear industry and public, how to provide safety and uh, step by step 
uh, to reorient the nuclear industry for the alternative uh, activities like decommissioning. It is uh, the problem, uh, it is not simple problem. It is, I think it is more uh, difficult problem because it is not only, there are not only technical component, but uh, social, um, economical and political aspect we have. So I think uh, we need to act on this uh, way together. But as alternative, alternative energy sources become <coughs> more and more <coughs> viable and less expensive, will nuclear energy eventually fall by the wayside because it's just too expensive or is it just going to be an excuse to create the fuel for nuclear weapons? Is that what it's going to end up? Uh, I think uh, we need real competition between different uh, energy sources. I mean, renewable energy, nuclear. Now we have no such competition. And uh, we need to discuss how much cost, uh, how much money we need for the decommissioning. For example, uh, the Ignalina nuclear power plant, two units, uh, according to current situation, they need for the decommissioning uh, about 3 billion euro for the decommissioning of the two nuclear reactors. It is expensive. And for example, uh, for the main Yankee, we need, uh, uh, they already uh, decommissioned, uh, they, uh, it cost about 600 million um, US dollars. It's, it was more expensive than construction the same nuclear power plant. So if we we'll include to the uh, nuclear tariff the money which we need for the decommissioning and to, um, to show the people who will pay for this. And uh, of course, uh, I'm sure that only renewable energy our future. And in the same time, we have another problem. Uh, just now, um, according, um, uh, I, I'd like to speak like uh, ecologist. Uh, according to the investigation, uh, we can use in our planet only 1% of the energy which we have from the sun. If we will take from like fossil fuel more than 1% energy and to disappear uh, this energy on our planet, it, 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 will, it is a problem for the ecosystems. They destroy reproduction of the ecosystem. Like ecologist, I know that we have uh, not only problem with the dirty uh, energy, but uh, we have problem in our planet uh, because we use much more energy uh, than we can use without the disintegration, destroying our environment. So the problem is that we need to discuss how to save energy. And uh, maybe safe energy and renewable energy, it is the direction, uh, general direction for the, um, our future.